Once again, hello everyone and welcome back to The Long's Journey. I'm Lord Bailey, I'm your gameplay commentator and we will be trying to get back to Stark in this episode. I think we need to go and talk to Map Merchant, so let's do that straight away. And he should be able to tell me something about Mr. Whitehouse, who apparently is a map collector. Maps! Ah, there we go. I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Okay, so he doesn't know him by his name, but we did get mentioning of Rolling Man, so let's do that. Can you tell me where the Rolling Man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because I need to find him. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! I really need to know where the rolling man lives. He will want a favor Sorry, for that. Please? Pretty please? No, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. <laughs> Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? She probably I is. I still can't tell you, though. I got maps. If I buy a map, can you just show me on the map where he lives? Please tell me where the rolling man lives. No, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information. Okay, we've got through that already. You're late again! And you know what else? You're fired! Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Okay, that was kind of racist, and I think you just fired a little boy. Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Dolmari to do a human job. What exactly is Dolmari? I want to ask about that. I don't think I can, though. What are you going to do now without a delivery boy? Hire a new one, of course. Uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants. Damnation! If I deliver the map for you, will you tell me where Brian lives? Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable, and I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy could work if the Guild of Merchants don't find out. They don't have to know. Tell them if you don't. There you go. Kind the of pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job if you tell me where Brian Westhouse is, unless the next delivery is for him, in which case I'll just take the job. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the captain of the White Dragon. Nebebe, I think his name is. You'll I think we've him met him. Harbor. Yes, yes, we definitely have met him. And this will give us a coin to oh, maybe play for the bird. The customers sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps, fresh, detailed, life-saving maps. For some reason, I think that getting that signature is going to be an issue for this way or another. I'm, I don't think you would have mentioned it if it wasn't the case, or maybe I'm just being paranoid and I'm expecting everything to be an obstacle. Which, given the situation and given what we've learned so far about this world, will probably be the case. But let's not jump to conclusions too hastily. He's selling a variety of fresh shellfish and other uh, delicacies. Yes, we know that, but we were actually wanting to go to here, I believe. And that was, I think, that last ship down there. As I say, I think that's the captain that we've already met before. So let's go ahead and let's deal with him. That should be fairly easy. Go back, maybe ask about West House again, or maybe just get another another map this time for him who's this i can't speak to him uh, but whoever it was he was talking to my captain which doesn't bode well i've got a map for you Ahoy sir there, matey. pardon isn't that how you sailors greet each other no w what do you say then usually hello and if it's sunny nice day for it we might even try a how are you today then if we're feeling adventurous. 
but never, ever, ahoy. We shall remember that. This is valuable information. Yes, Fine yes, it is indeed. That it be. <laughs> um. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the white dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the temple market. Aye. I meet Captain Horatio Nebave of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. I'll give you the map if you sign for it. Because we need a signature. Okay, we've got delivery list. I haven't had a look at that yet. So one map of the Sea of Songs to Captain Horatio Nebave of the White Dragon. Map of Chan -ga -ga, 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 ga the wasteland to Rolling Man. Ah, Rolling Man, there we go. And one map of Netherlands to be delivered to Toon Leak at the Journeyman Inn. Okay, I just need the second job to be honest with you, so I'm not that bothered about the last one. It's I'll have a look. Of songs. I was told to deliver it to Captain Horatio Nebave. Okay, I was just hoping I can look at the map, but obviously it's sealed, so let's just hand it over. Get a signature and get done with it. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. Oh, thank you. So that's my tip. I'm still gonna get paid from... Uh, from the guy, aren't I? I, I needed to ask for signature. Maybe he needs to sign the list. Ah, there we go. Sign this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? Oh, don't get the started. The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Can we sign for him? Why not? Brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. No, it's not. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyen, and we're a spiritual people. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey! Blame organized religion. Yes, yes, we shall do that. And I'll blame Mojal as well. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh, so what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Just put an X, yes, Look, exactly. All you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. I'll definitely have to sign it for him. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But, no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, that I can forge. There's always music. What music? Why music? What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing. But it distracts the mojo. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... mojo? I can't sign when there's a chance the mojo is watching. Music distracts the mojo. Ergo, I can sign. And he obviously doesn't... Doesn't that mean the mojo is always distracted? See the conversation. I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The mojo has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the mojo. But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Probably should. Blasphemy. Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. Oh, fair enough then. Uh, yeah, we will we will go and go ahead and find a music instrument to play. So, 
If I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. There's no reasoning for the guy. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. Okay, I do believe there was a stand somewhere there uh, with musical instruments. So let's see what we can afford with our one coin that we've got. But then again, if I spend the coin on the musical instrument, I won't be able to play the caps for um, for the bird or anything else for that matter. But let's let's give it a go in here first. Um, do I need to speak to the merchant or do I just hand them over the coin? I probably will have to speak to the merchant then. Okay. Come on, April. Double time. What's your um most affordable instrument? That's cute. And sounds cheap. Flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. Ah, well done. Just exactly what we've got. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? So now, please tell me that April actually knows how to play the flute. As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Ah, there you go. Not very well, but I'm sure the uh, Mojal won't mind. Okay, so let's go back, let's play the flute for the captain, get that signed off, and let's move on with the quest. That was actually a bit simpler than I was expecting it to be. I really thought that it would involve unspeakable things. But playing flute is not is not too bad. I could I could have got gotten worse. Um can I just Use it, play. Oh, should I just do that? Let's walk closer to the captain so he sees us. Is that enough? Can you sign now? I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on, but don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojo will surely wreak vengeance on us both. You think that your god is some kind of... Well, really, really not the most clever one, is he? Gullible. That's the word I was looking for. You think that your, your god is gullible. There you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Well, you can never guarantee anything in here. But yes, we got a nice X. It's Captain Nebeve's, uh, signature. Can't believe I went through all that just to get a simple X. I told you ages ago you should have forged it in first place, but obviously you haven't come up, come up with this. And to be honest, knowing this game, getting an ink and a quill would have proven much more difficult than just playing some music on a flute. That I think we still have, so maybe it will come come in handy in the future. So we can now go all the way back to to the stall, and I think then we get a map for uh, which one do I need? I need this one, and then I think we get a map for the Rolling Man. And I think that's that's it for my career of errand boy slash girl. But I may be mistaken. So you will be pleased to know that we have done our bit. Now you can pay us. Right. Your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on. Did you not ask me about him earlier today? No. Um. No. No. That wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? No idea. I forget. 
Uh, let me explain then. Now, pay attention because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, okay. where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, there. This the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that. Where you'll turn left. That's okay. west? No, left. That'll take you back south. Yeah, but that's onto here. North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way. Nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on south, south street, south on north street, or, or the other way around. Anyway, oh, come on. Rose Bridge off uh, I Reed Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes I'm of lost. Mercuria. And that's where West House, I, I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually, you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tendak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn right at the Maiden's Honor Tavern. North again? Uh, no, west. Uh, Parrot Lane has a few twists and turns. Anyway, you should now be able to see the ivory tower. Is it a big tower? No, only about five feet tall. But it's ivory, straight from the coast of the Southlands, bravely cut from the drooling jaws of the gruesome Kandar. I hope I won't have to remember all big that. Creature, four legs, large ears, long snout, sort of grayish in color? Yes, the horror of the Southlands. Many a brave hunter has fallen victim to its ravaging hunger. Good grief. Okay, then what? Pass by the tower to the edge of the cliff and look down. The rolling man has built his home on the cliffside. It's a wonder he's not been washed this? away by the storms. <laughs> I hope I got all that. Basically, go west until I hit the edge, right? Uh, yes, that would be correct. Okay, that's so much simpler. And I was in a completely wrong place. Never mind. I don't need that... Um, that signature thing anymore. Uh, I do need to go to the West House. I think this way is the most, most reasonable way to go. And then hopefully we have the quick travel on the map available. Yes, we do. Mr. Westhouse, hello, finally. You. Back home, a place like this would easily set you back tens of millions. Here, it's probably free. Yeah, but then again, there are some some things that you get for free in Stark that won't be free here. It's a brown, slightly cloudy liquor. That's probably Mr. Westhouse. Well, let's ask. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, well, <clears throat> guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya, are you? Sorry, I don't no, know. No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... Yeah, hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. <laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? 
Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. Okay, so we found the guy. Now let's just make sure that he wants to cooperate with us and knows how to send us back home. And we'll be on our way. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. Not really. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what may I do for you? You could tell me how to go back home, but I think you're just busy getting drunk at the moment. I have a delivery for you. I do, yes. A delivery? When did the US Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? Yesterday. It's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Well, hold your horses. What are you doing working for the guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? Not really. I strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. What exactly do you live off? That's actually quite interesting. And will you pay me for the map, please? Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? You, you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 19. That's like 200 years ago. But that's almost 300, 300. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Yeah, let's roll with oh, it. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds, where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. So is there a chance that I will get stuck like that if I travel between the worlds? Cortez had to look you up when I wanted to go back home, to Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel priests for assistance. They know nothing. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. Well, you better think of something, because I want to go home. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details. But suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of 
virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So Manny is Indian? He did he did look more like, well, American Indian rather than Indian Indian. So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown tracks. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it. I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before... pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in Yes, I do agree I with that. Going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Okay, which is very nice and all, but I was hoping to be able to get home from here. Um, just sign this for me first. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. And how can I get home then? If he doesn't... Well, for some reason Cortez has pointed me to him. So he must have something to do with it. Let's let's have a look around. I can't hold my liquor. I'll be spending the rest of the day doubled over, staring into the ocean, and... Uh, I'll just not have any. Okay, that's fine. I don't think there's hold anything... Hold on one second, Go on. Ryan. I just remembered something. Talk to me. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it if it's any help. Thanks. Okay, so I need to repair the watch in order to be noticed by Cortez in the, in the other world, I believe. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The okay. knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. Okay... Could I possibly... If I insert this pin carefully into the hole, like so, and then slowly wind it... It worked! It's ticking! Okay, so I presume there we go! That was an easy one! Did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift! I haven't seen one for ages! Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would uh, suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? 
This world is more recognizable to me now. I understand now that. Now you go ahead, Miss Ray, and go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. I will do. I really don't think that's my last shift, but I will do. Pass your message. Cortez. Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy or you were right about everything. Or both. Hey, let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Yes, yes it was. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well, do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. Okay, so we did manage to come back. Let's finish, finish the conversation and then we'll finish the episode. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance, about Stark and Arcadia. Yep. A man named Tobias. He was called the Vestrum, I, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum give Yang good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an Instrum then, a student of the balance. But he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing, and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most, but even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others, and they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. Who are you really, Cortez? I think he's a dragon. Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez, but several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. More so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is is wondering about what and and how and where. Yeah, no, that's not what the it truth. is. Yeah. Just to be able to know you, because uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... there are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Perdóname. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, you need me to focus your powers to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. 
You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. Okay, that is a lot to take in. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this. But what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Okay, and if he's with them, is he with them willingly or was he kidnapped? Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That, I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. And what exactly is our mission here? Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself, the other is the Four Jewels, the Eyes of the Dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Okay, so I've got more things to ask Tobias. Can I just travel between the worlds on a whim, or is it gonna be scripted when I can go back? Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. Two in Arcadia, and two in Stark. The white dragon has one, as does the old one. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. Thank you. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here, and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the Tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, Senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure, they're... Oh, that's the Vanguard? See. Then they're big, very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. 
So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... No. That will have to wait. Oh, come on! By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. So am I going to be the next guardian? And imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly. And you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some vanguard ass, find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000 year old disc and four dragon eye jewels? Easy peasy. And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18. I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers, that I wasn't like everybody else. True, but you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are and what you will be. Well, there's not much choosing in what happens here. What happens if I choose? No, no way. I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just... me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? Not really. For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be... Yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, but where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, you must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that... Um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right. Okay. Where do I find him? My friend. Father Raul at the Hope Street Cathedral. He's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait, did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, 
I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. Yeah. It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay, good. It's a plan then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. Is this the night where we're supposed to meet Zack? Oh gosh, that is gonna be a long, long evening, isn't it? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know this way or another. And I will see you in the next one.